Hey guys, this is Adam from at Adam J. Kurz over on Instagram. I've had a couple of questions asking me to show in more detail how I did the shadows and lighting on the lion in my recent speed art video. As with everything in Photoshop, there are many different ways to go about doing something, and a lot of it comes down to personal preference or style. I like to use the exposure adjustment layer when it comes to shadows and lighting on subjects, and in this video I'll go through my basic process for achieving these effects. So here we have our lion and a strong primary light source, but no lighting yet on our lion. Before I do the lighting, first I like to have the subject quite flat and bright. Here is a quick camera raw I did earlier on the smart object, where I have knocked back the contrast, increased the brightness in the darkest areas, and made the colours fairly neutral. I like to do this initial camera raw on the subjects in a composite, so they all have a consistent base to work from, rather than trying to overcompensate for, say, a slightly too warm or cool looking subject when we do our own lighting. Back to our line then. My basic process for creating shadows and lighting is first, I like to darken the subject to create the shadow. Then I mask away areas of the shadow where the light is hitting from our main light source. Then I like to add colour to these areas. Starting with the shadows then, first I will briefly show you why I prefer to use exposure over curves. Just to demonstrate, let's add a curves and clip it to our line. If we simply bring the brightness straight down, we lose a lot of detail and it's a very flat looking shadow. We can of course then fine tune the curve by adding more points and then adjusting these to affect more or less of the shadows, mids and highlights to help bring back in some of the details. But I find this quite time consuming, it's tricky to get a consistent result each time and it's quite easy to over adjust a certain area and lose what you have done in another area. So instead, I like to use the exposure adjustment layer. This has three separate sliders, which allow you to independently adjust the highlights, midtones, and shadows, as each slider has a greater influence over these areas. The top slider, Exposure, has a greater influence over the bright areas. The offset slider in the middle has a greater influence over the darkest areas, and the Gamma Correction has greatest influence over the midtones. Note that with the Gamma Correction slider, you need to slide it to the right to darken the image rather than to the left. I like to first adjust the gamma correction to the right to darken the midtones until the subject is darkened while still preserving the details. I then reduce the exposure slider until the overall subject is a bit darker. For now, I will leave the offset slider at zero, but I may tweak this later on. I don't want to affect the absolute brightest parts, such as the lion's whiskers, as these will provide nice details later. A quick and easy way to achieve this is double click the exposure adjustment layer to bring up the layer styles window and then option click and drag on the blend if grey underlying layer highlight slider to break it apart and bring it just enough to the left so the whiskers go back to their original brightness. Essentially what this is doing is making these bright pixels that are the whiskers invisible in the adjustment layer and because we option click the slider handle it has a smooth fall off rather than being too harsh. Now we have our basic shadow, we can add a layer adjustment mask to our exposure and using a very low flow and soft brush set to pure black, we can paint away areas of the exposure adjustment where the lights from the light source would hit our lion's face. Using a low flow enables us to have greater control and paint away the effect gradually. Using a pressure sensitive tablet and pen is a great way for doing this sort of thing. Keep doing this so the effect becomes less the further away from the main light source you go, so these areas stay more in the shadow. Once you like how it looks, we can move on to adding some colour to the light areas to match the colour from the light source. I like to use a gradient map adjustment layer for this, so we can have a little bit of variation in the colours. Let's add a gradient map colour adjustment layer and clip it to the exposure layer. This way both of these adjustments will only affect the lion. Make sure the adjustment layer thumbnail is selected. By default Photoshop has the mask thumbnail selected. And click the gradient to bring up the gradient editor. We want to use the eyedropper to pick out some different colours. If we still had the mask selected, we would only be able to pick white. Click on the little swatches and pick out some nice dark orange tones for the darker parts of the gradient map, a really bright area for the brighter tones, and a strong mid-orange hue for the mid-tone parts of the gradient map. We can easily adjust these later on if we need to. Once we have our colours, let's option click and drag our exposure adjustment layers mask to apply the same mask to the colours. In this case though, we want to invert the mask, so we reveal the colours over the areas hit by the light source, rather than the shadows. So with the mask selected, hit Command-I to invert it. We have our colours in the right areas now, but this obviously looks a bit weird, so we need to change the blend mode to soft light. This creates a nice effect, and if it's still a bit too strong, we can reduce the opacity a bit to make it a bit more subtle.
I then like to paint on the mask a large area but with a low flow brush set to white just to blend it a little bit so the rest of the line can get some residual glow. We can also try tweaking the positions of the swatches in the gradient map to change how much influence the colours have over the dark and light areas. Lastly, I like to add a curves adjustment layer, which combined with the adjustments we have just made, allow us to reduce the effect a bit on the further away areas from the light source. Let's add a curves adjustment layer to bring the brightness right down so we have a strong shadow over everything we've just done. We only want this to affect the areas farthest from the light source, so the approach I like to use is paint a large solid black spot on the curves adjustment layer mask in the area where we want the most light to be. We can then unlink the mask from the curves layer by clicking the little chain link icon and then using transform let's rotate and scale a bit so we roughly match the angle of the lion's head. We then want to click the layer mask to bring up the mask properties and boost the feather value but a large amount to really soften the mask so there's no hard edge whatsoever. This method allows us to then easily adjust the position and rotation and feather a little bit more to really fine tune it should we wish to. For a final touch, let's create a little reflection of the light source in the lion's eye by zooming in and simply painting a solid white dot with a little bit of softness into roughly the place where the reflection would be. Since our line is basically side on, let's add a layer mask and use a simple linear black to white gradient we can paint half of the dot away to leave a simple semicircle shape. This is the basic process complete. At this point it's a good idea to go back and make small adjustments to the exposure, gradient map and final curves layer to fine tune how it looks. The full speed art video showing the complete process of creating the artwork from scratch is on my YouTube channel. Click the end screen above to check it out. As always if you found this tutorial helpful please consider clicking the like and subscribe buttons. See you next time.